All right, I promised you guys I was gonna test this thing before I ever took it out on the highway, and that's exactly what I'm doing today. Today is judgment day. So my plan is to walk this high line, which is attached to the back side of the topper, and by using the tension of the high line, I'm gonna put a thousand pound side load on this thing and see if it can hold up under the weight. It might crumble, I might fall, who knows? Let's get at it and see what happens. The goal for this test is to create a thousand pound side load which represents the approximate force that would be generated by a 120 mile per hour wind. To do this, I built a four point distributed anchor across the mounting rails and then equalized the cordelette into a single master point on the roof which served as the main high line anchor. Conveniently, my class A RV is roughly the same height as the van topper, so for the other end I simply ran the high line over the roof and attached it to the hitch of the RV. At this point, you're probably asking yourself, how the heck are we gonna generate a thousand pound side load with this setup? And it's really not that difficult. So just using a few known values, so I'm just gonna to disclose to you my body weight's about 185 pounds. So using that and knowing that the distance between our anchor points is 30 feet, we can do just a little bit of basic trigonometry and basically figure out what this dimension D needs to be in order to create a tension in this line of a thousand pounds. So looking at this force vector triangle we have set up here, we have my body weight down, and then the tension of the high line is gonna be coming up at some angle theta off of horizontal. So doing a little bit of trigonometry, we can quickly figure out that that angle needs to be 5.31 degrees in order to have exactly a thousand pounds in that high line based on my body weight and the distance of the slack line. Then we can take that 5.31 degrees and doing a little bit more math, we can quickly figure out that this distance D here to generate a thousand pounds is 1.39 feet or 16.7 inches. So that's the goal. We're gonna try and have a deflection of 17 inches in the center based on my body weight. To anyone who's ever walked a slack line, you know exactly how much these things can move. So my gut feeling is that the 16 inches is gonna be kind of difficult to reach. I'm thinking it's gonna to wanna to move a lot more than that in the center, but we won't know until we try. I'll get on this thing and put a tape measure to it and see how much deflection there is, and then see if we can fine tune the system and dial it into a thousand pounds. The first few steps of a slack line are notorious for being the most difficult. The frequency of the line changes extremely fast as you move away from the anchor, and you have to adjust for that with every single step. And the fact that this is nearly 10 feet in the air makes it that much harder to commit. I've had some fun playing around on this thing, but now it's time to get to the business. Our goal was a 17 inch deflection in the center based on my body weight, but in reality with the flex of the line and the sway of the van, I was a lot closer to 30 inches than 17. After tightening the line as much as I possibly could, the best I could do was a 24 inch deflection in the center. When we plug this back into our equations, we end up with a 700 pound load in the slack line at a 7.6 degree angle. Now this is just for the static load case. If we factor in the dynamic load case and take into consideration some of the accelerations of my body weight bouncing on the line, I think we're well over the thousand pound mark that we were looking for.
So I'm going to call that a pass on the side load test. Um, I put as much tension in that high line as I possibly could. I think with the dynamic loading of bouncing on that line, we we're well over the thousand pound load mark that I was looking for. Um, but I also want to do a couple other tests just to ensure the structural integrity of this thing before it sees the highway. So I'm going to do a little impact test just using a hammer, go around, hit this thing as many times as I can, see if the sheet metal is reinforced as much as it needs to be. Um, and then also a torsion test where I'm going to lift up one of the rear wheels um, with the jacks I have and put as much of a twist in the body of the vehicle as I can and see if there's any pops or cracks that form um, that need to be reinforced. So here we go. You know, I'm really not surprised that this is now one of the strongest points on the vehicle. As I've stated throughout this video series, fiberglass is by far the strongest component of this whole build. And when you get three or four layers properly applied, it becomes extremely hard, very tough, and just reinforces this aluminum flashing and plywood to the nth degree. So I'm really pleased with how this thing has turned out. Well, that's it for this time. Um, I've just about done every test I can think of without taking this thing out on the road. Um, so now I feel comfortable to do a highway test. Uh, so the next video, we're gonna be trying to get this thing up over 100 miles per hour. Um, obviously, I'm gonna do it in very controlled environment, uh, very rural area, make sure nobody's around and see how fast we can go and make sure this thing doesn't blow off. So that's the next video. Then we also have the whole interior build. As you can see behind me, I already got it kind of started here with the ceiling. We got some lights, roof vents, we got windows, we got a custom rear hatch back here. I already got my pull-up bar. So make sure you stay tuned because we got a long way to go.